People give up when things get hard. They want more, they want different, they want other selections. What's up everyone? Today we're diving deep into the life of a true music icon, Mary J. Blige. Known as the queen of hip hop soul, Mary has touched millions with her raw, soulful sound and powerful lyrics. But behind the glamorous career and chart-topping hits lies a story filled with struggle, pain, and resilience. Mary didn't just sing about heartbreak, love, and survival. She lived it. From her challenging childhood in the Bronx to her meteoric rise in the music industry. This is the journey of Mary J. Blige, a woman who transformed her personal pain into timeless music. Mary Jane Blige was born on January 11, 1971 in the Bronx, New York, to parents Cora and Thomas Blige. She was the second daughter in a household that faced many struggles. Her mother, Cora, worked as a nurse, often bringing music into the home with classics from artists like Gladys Knight and Shaka Khan. Her father, Thomas, was a jazz musician who exposed Mary and her sister to the technicalities of music. But despite his musical talents, Thomas was haunted by trauma from serving in the Vietnam War, and he struggled with post-traumatic stress disorder. This led to a turbulent environment at home. In 1975, when Mary was just four years old, her father left the family. His departure left a deep void and forced Cora to raise Mary and her older sister Latanya on her own. The family moved to the Slobom housing projects in Yonkers, a place that locals had nicknamed Slobom for the constant tension and conflict within its walls. Mary's early years were shaped by an environment filled with hardship and violence. She recalls seeing things that no child should ever witness. Fights, women running out of their homes, and even cases of domestic abuse that haunted her. Despite these tough surroundings, Mary found solace in her love for music. She sang with the junior choir at her church and visited her grandmother in Georgia every summer, which offered her some brief escapes from the chaos back home. But beneath the surface, Mary was dealing with significant emotional pain, worsened by personal trauma that she kept to herself for years. As if her father's abandonment and the harsh realities of her environment weren't enough, Mary endured another tragic experience that left her scarred. When she was just five years old, she was violated by a family friend at a house party. This experience left her feeling isolated, misunderstood, and deeply hurt. She kept this traumatic event to herself, and it became a burden she carried alone for years. Yet through all this, Mary found some solace in music. It was the one thing that allowed her to process and express the pain she felt inside. Mary began singing everywhere, at home, at school, and most importantly, at church, where she felt the safest. When she was seven years old, her music teacher encouraged her to participate in a talent show at school. Mary sang Peaches and Nerves Reunited, and though she was initially hesitant, her teacher's push gave her the courage to step onto that stage. While Mary hadn't yet realized her full potential, this moment was one of her first steps toward finding her voice. Life in the Yonkers projects wasn't easy. Mary was constantly faced with harassment and violence and had to fight regularly just to prove she wasn't someone who could be messed with. Survival meant adapting, and Mary quickly learned that in order to be respected, she had to put up a tough exterior. She started wearing baggy jeans, Timberlands, and turned her cap backwards, creating a look that made her feel protected. This ghetto fabulous style would eventually become part of her signature image. But despite the outward toughness, Mary was struggling internally. She started drinking and experimenting with drugs in her teenage years, using them as an escape from her pain and frustrations. By the time she was 16, she had dropped out of Roosevelt High School, which opened the door to spending more time on the streets, experimenting with alcohol and other substances. Mary's path took an unexpected turn one day in 1988 when she was hanging out at the Galleria Mall in Westchester. She stumbled upon a karaoke machine in one of the stores and decided to try it out. One of the songs available was Anita Baker's Caught Up in the Rapture. Mary sang her heart out, recording her voice over the track. That recording was the spark that set her future in motion. After Mary made the recording, she brought it home and played it for her mom. Her mom, recognizing her talent, passed the recording to her boyfriend, who happened to know Jeff Red, a rising star in the music industry. Jeff, who was also working as a backup dancer and artist at Uptown Records, was captivated by the emotion in Mary's voice. He once said, what I heard was the pain of a young girl who had been through a lot. 
Jeff took the cassette to Andre Harrell, the head of Uptown Records, and the rest, as they say, is history. In 1989, Uptown Records signed Mary, marking the beginning of her journey to stardom. However, Mary wasn't an immediate star. Uptown Records was home to some of the most prominent names in New Jack Swing, including Heavy D and the Boys and Al B. Shore. So the competition was fierce. But Andre Harrell saw something unique in Mary's voice. She didn't have the polished sound of Whitney Houston or the glamour of Vanessa Williams. Instead, Mary's voice was raw, real, and full of soul. She was like no other female R&B artist on the scene. Mary's authenticity was what set her apart. While she hadn't yet released her own music, she began working as a session singer, doing background vocals and working closely with Jeff Redd. The early 1990s were a transformative time for Mary as she slowly started to find her unique sound. Unlike the traditional R&B style, Mary's music was infused with hip hop beats, creating a sound that was fresh, gritty, and reflective of her experiences. In 1991, her song, You Remind Me, was featured on the soundtrack for the film Strictly Business. The song became an instant hit, capturing the attention of fans and industry insiders alike. People were buzzing about this new voice, this girl from Yonkers with a sound like no one else. It wasn't long before Mary was preparing to launch her debut album. By this time, a young intern named Sean Puffy Combs had started working at Uptown Records. Known for his ambitious personality, Puff quickly began making a name for himself. He saw Mary's potential and knew she could bring something groundbreaking to the industry. Puff envisioned Mary as the voice of a new genre, hip hop soul. Unlike the polished R&B singers of the time, Mary was rough around the edges, relatable, and had an undeniable realness that resonated with listeners. Puff took her under his wing, refining her style and introducing her to a look that would become her trademark. He swapped out her baggy jeans and t-shirts for designer clothes, but kept her Timberlands and backward cap, giving her a blend of street and high fashion that became iconic. Mary J. Blige's debut album, What's the 411, was a massive success, solidifying her place in the music industry and introducing the world to the genre of hip hop soul. But while she was enjoying a meteoric rise in fame, Mary was also battling inner demons that threatened to derail her career. Behind the glamorous photo shoots, chart-topping hits, and sold-out shows, Mary struggled with insecurities, personal trauma, and self-destructive habits that had been simmering for years. Her newfound fame did little to quiet her feelings of unworthiness and pain. Mary often felt isolated, despite her rising success. Growing up in the projects, she had been conditioned to put on a tough exterior, but the deep-rooted trauma she carried from her childhood still haunted her. The industry pressure, coupled with her personal struggles, led Mary to lean even more heavily on substances. By this time, she was drinking excessively and using drugs, all in an attempt to numb the pain she couldn't seem to escape. During this time, Mary found herself in a complicated and often toxic relationship with KC Haley from the R&B group Jodeci. The two had an undeniable chemistry, and their duet, I Don't Want to Do Anything, became a fan favorite, symbolizing a new wave of R&B and hip-hop collaboration. But behind the scenes, their relationship was filled with turmoil. Casey was both verbally and physically abusive toward Mary, adding another layer of pain to her already fragile emotional state. I don't know how it happened, V. I, I guess I was going to be saying something, just like James Brown had to make up a word. <laughs> Mary later opened up about the abuse she endured, admitting that she stayed in the relationship out of a misguided sense of love and loyalty. I took it. I took everything. I took the verbal, the physical, Mary said in an interview. Her relationship with KC only fueled her insecurities as she struggled to understand why someone she loved would treat her so poorly. This relationship led her to spiral even further, pushing her deeper into substance abuse. Mary began to dress in baggy clothes and avoided makeup in an attempt to shield herself from further pain and unwanted attention. Her music career was thriving, but her personal life was in chaos. Fans could feel the raw emotion in her songs, which resonated with those who had experienced similar hardships. Her vulnerability and honesty in her music became a source of strength for her fans, even if, at the time, Mary was struggling to find her own. In 1994, Mary released her second album, my Life. This album is often considered her magnum opus, 
a raw, unfiltered look into her struggles, insecurities, and heartbreaks. Mary channeled the pain from her relationship with KC and the scars from her past into this album, which became a blueprint for her legacy. My life wasn't just music, it was therapy. Mary began recording My Life while working closely with Puff Daddy, who had recently been let go from Uptown Records. Despite no longer being officially tied to the label, Puff continued to collaborate with Mary, executive producing the album and helping her to craft the sound. The sessions took place in Puff's studio, Daddy's House, where Mary recorded some of her most personal tracks. She poured her heart into every song, addressing themes of pain, depression, and survival with an honesty that resonated deeply with listeners. Songs like Be Happy and I'm Going Down captured the pain Mary felt as she navigated her turbulent personal life. In the title track, My Life, she speaks openly about her struggles with depression, singing, If you looked in my life and see what I've seen, the album was a commercial success, but it was more than that. It was a testament to Mary's resilience and her willingness to bear her soul. My Life went on to sell millions of copies, but more importantly, it became a lifeline for fans who were dealing with their own struggles. As Mary's career continued to soar, her reputation as a diva started to follow her. In the media, she was often portrayed as difficult or demanding. Stories of her snapping at interviewers, showing up late to events, or clashing with colleagues painted a picture of a woman who was difficult to work with. Mary later admitted that her attitude was a defense mechanism a way to protect herself from being hurt in an industry that was often harsh and unforgiving. In one infamous incident, Mary was profiled by Interview Magazine, where fashion model and actress Veronica Webb detailed their encounter. According to Webb, Mary asked if they needed to fist fight, showcasing her rough exterior and reluctance to trust others. While these interactions added to her bad girl image, they were also a reflection of the pain and anger Mary carried with her. Despite these challenges, Mary's talent was undeniable. Her music continued to captivate audiences and her raw honesty set her apart from other artists in the R&B scene. She wasn't polished or perfect, but that's what made her so relatable. Mary's authenticity became her superpower and fans couldn't get enough. As the years went on, Mary realized that her self-destructive habits were taking a toll on her career, her health, and her spirit. She began to see the impact of her choices and knew she needed to make a change. By the time she started working on her third album, Share My World, Mary was ready to embark on a journey of self-discovery and healing. Released in 1997, Share My World marked a new era for Mary. For the first time, she was free from Uptown Records as her mentor Andre Harrell had left the label making room for Mary to explore new creative avenues. The album included collaborations with artists like Nas and featured songs that spoke to Mary's growth and her desire to break free from the past. Share My World was a huge success, debuting at number one on the Billboard 200 and selling millions of copies. This album represented Mary's evolution. She was no longer the young girl from Yonkers struggling to find her voice. She had faced her demons, embraced her flaws, and come out stronger on the other side. While she still faced challenges in her personal life, Share My World showcased a Mary J. Blige who was determined to overcome her past and reclaim her life. Her song Love Is All We Need, a duet with Nas, became a fan favorite, symbolizing her journey toward healing and self-acceptance. Mary was ready to step into the next chapter of her life, leaving behind the pain that had once defined her. In 1998, during a show in Detroit, Mary came face to face with her father for the first time since he abandoned the family over two decades earlier. The reunion was tense and bittersweet as Mary hoped for closure but was met with disappointment. Instead of an apology, her father asked her for money. This moment brought old wounds to the surface, reminding Mary of the hurt she had carried since she was a young girl. Still, she was determined not to let her past define her. Mary's success continued to grow, but she knew that her fame came with a price. The emotional toll of her turbulent childhood, abusive relationships, and self-destructive habits had left lasting scars. But Mary channeled that pain into her music, using it as a form of therapy. She was now a voice for those who had suffered in silence, proving that there was strength and vulnerability. By the time she released her fourth album, Mary, in 1999, she had begun to embrace a more soulful, mature sound. 
This album marked a departure from the hip-hop beats that had defined her earlier work as she experimented with more traditional R&B sounds. Though it didn't achieve the same commercial success as her previous albums, Mary was critically acclaimed and received praise for its authenticity and depth. As Mary's career continued to rise, she sought stability in her personal life. In 2003, she met Kendu Isaacs, a music producer and manager. For Mary, Kendu represented everything she longed for in a partner, security, love, and someone who could take care of her. After years of turbulent relationships, Mary was ready to settle down, and in December 2003, they married in an intimate ceremony. Mary was overjoyed, describing Kendu as a father figure she never had, and someone who made her feel safe. During their marriage, Kendu became Mary's manager, overseeing her career and helping her make business decisions. For a while, everything seemed to fall into place. Mary's 2005 album, The Breakthrough, was a commercial and critical success, selling over 700,000 copies in its first week. The lead single, Be Without You, became one of her most popular songs, spending 15 weeks at the top of the R&B charts. The album's success earned Mary three Grammy Awards, cementing her place as one of the most influential artists of her generation. But behind the scenes, Mary's marriage to Kendu was far from perfect. Over time, their relationship became strained as Kendu allegedly mismanaged her finances and was unfaithful. Despite Mary's efforts to make the marriage work, she couldn't ignore the issues that were tearing them apart. In 2016, after 13 years of marriage, Mary filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. The divorce was a painful and public battle, with Kendu seeking nearly $130,000 a month in spousal support. The divorce was financially devastating for Mary, as she was left paying significant alimony and legal fees. She described the experience as devastating, saying, I had nothing when I left out of that marriage. I had to work. I had my name, so I had to work, and so I did. You know, that record, you know, um, You're All I Need, that was major, that was big for hip-hop. The end of her marriage was a harsh reminder that even in love, Mary had to fight for her happiness. Following her divorce, Mary turned once again to music as a way to heal. In 2017, she released her album Strength of a Woman, a project inspired by her painful separation from Kendu. The album resonated deeply with fans as Mary bared her soul, singing about betrayal, heartbreak, and the strength it took to walk away from a toxic relationship. Songs like Set Me Free and Think of It captured Mary's anger, resilience, and determination to move forward. Strength of a Woman debuted at number three on the Billboard 200, proving that Mary's ability to connect with her audience had not waned. Her fans saw themselves in her story. They recognized her strength and were inspired by her willingness to face her pain head on. For Mary, this album was a reminder of the inner strength that had carried her through countless challenges. Despite the heartbreak, she was ready to reclaim her life and redefine her happiness on her terms. As Mary continued to thrive in her music career, she also began exploring new avenues in Hollywood. In 2017, she starred in the critically acclaimed film Mudbound, where her performance as Florence Jackson earned her widespread praise. Mary's role was raw and powerful, showcasing her range as an actress and her ability to convey deep emotion. The film garnered her two Oscar nominations, one for Best Supporting Actress and another for Best Original Song, making her the first person ever to be nominated for both acting and songwriting in the same year. The success of Mudbound opened new doors for Mary, cementing her status as a multi-talented artist and earning her respect in both the music and film industries. Reflecting on her journey, Mary admitted that her acting role was deeply personal as she channeled the pain of her recent divorce into her performance. I was going through hell with my marriage, and I used a lot of that, she shared. Her work in Mudbound was a testament to her resilience and ability to turn pain into power. With a newfound confidence, Mary continued to pursue acting opportunities, taking on roles in television series like The Umbrella Academy and Power Book Two, Ghost. Her transition into acting allowed her to reach new audiences and showcase the versatility that had defined her career. In 2019, Mary received one of the highest honors in the entertainment industry, the BET Lifetime Achievement Award. This recognition celebrated her incredible impact on music, her groundbreaking contributions to the genre of hip-hop soul, and her unwavering resilience in the face of adversity. Artists like Rihanna, Alicia Keys, and Missy Elliott 
praise Mary as a pioneer who had paved the way for future generations of female artists. Accepting the award, Mary reflected on her journey and thanked her fans for their support throughout the years. People always ask me, how do you do it? How do you make it through everything you go through, she said. It's because of God, and it's because of you. Her acceptance speech was a testament to her resilience and her gratitude for the people who had supported her through thick and thin. For Mary, this award was more than just a career milestone. It was validation of her life's work. She had overcome challenges that would have broken most people, and she had done it with grace, strength, and an unyielding commitment to her craft. Her story became a beacon of hope for others, showing that it was possible to rise from the darkest places and create a legacy of triumph. In 2022, Mary J. Blige took to the stage at the Super Bowl halftime show, co-headlining with Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. Performing hits like Family Affair and No More Drama, Mary brought her signature energy and passion to one of the biggest stages in the world. For Mary, this performance was a full circle moment, a celebration of the journey that had taken her from the projects of Yonkers to international superstardom. The Super Bowl performance was not only a testament to Mary's enduring talent, but also a reminder of her resilience. She has survived decades in an industry that often chews up and spits out its stars. Through every trial, Mary had emerged stronger, more grounded, and more committed to her purpose. Fans around the world celebrated her triumph, and the performance cemented her status as a living legend. Today, Mary J. Blige's legacy is more than just her music. She has become a symbol of strength, resilience, and authenticity, inspiring millions with her story of survival. Through her pain, she found a way to heal others, proving that true artistry comes from honesty and vulnerability. Her songs are anthems for those who have struggled and survived, offering hope to anyone facing their own battles. Mary has shown that even in the face of unimaginable pain, it's possible to rise above, transform, and create something beautiful. She continues to make music, act, and advocate for mental health awareness, reminding her fans that healing is a journey, not a destination. Mary J. Blige's story is one of perseverance, resilience, and an unbreakable spirit. From her early days in Yonkers to the heights of superstardom, she has faced it all heartbreak, betrayal, addiction, and loss. Yet, through every setback, Mary has emerged stronger, using her voice to inspire others and share her truth. As we look back on her incredible journey, it's clear that Mary's impact goes far beyond music. She has created a legacy that will inspire future generations, proving that no matter where you come from or what you've been through, you can rise, thrive, and create a life of meaning and purpose. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the life of Mary J. Blige. If you've been inspired by her story, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more True Celebrity Stories. Mary's journey is far from over, and we can't wait to see what she'll do next. And that's the story of the queen of hip-hop soul, Mary J. Blige. Were you surprised by any part of her journey? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more incredible stories. Until next time, keep the music playing and stay inspired.